Good morning. Happy Sabbath. It is a little chilly this morning. I, I Maybe that's why all the pews are a little bit empty. I'm hoping when I come back up here, it'll be a little bit more full. I just have a quick um, two announcements to share with you this morning. The first is about our VBS program. It is host, or it's going to be run by Phyllis. I don't know if you've met her before. She's Ethan's mom, I believe. She's really sweet. She's really excited. And if you want to volunteer for anything, in the newsletter, there are, there's like a QR code that you can look into, and you can sign up for anything if you want to help. I'm sure that she'd be more than happy to get volunteers from us. And then I wanted to bring your attention to this little flyer that's in our bulletin this morning. It's about Pastor Philip Saman. I have not heard him speak before, but I've heard wonderful things about how he's a great speaker and that he's going to be doing um, a quick program with us. It's about Christ's way to salvation. It's going to be from May 10th to May 11th, and the program is listed on the left-hand side. It talks about the Vespers that we'll be having on Friday, and then it goes into the entire service that we'll have on Saturday. And the last thing I wanted to share was our membership transfer readings. The first one is we're welcoming, I'm going to butcher this person's name, so I apologize in advance. I believe it's Aqua Antwi from the First Nova Vanian Church. They are coming in. Can I get a motion to accept? Okay. Um, and then we always hate it when we lose members, but there are two members that we're losing, or they're transferring out. They're still our, our brothers and sisters in Christ, but they're transferring out to the first person is Shavante Chestnut to the Petersburg Church, and then Pat Wilcox in to the Lewisburg Church. Is there anyone who's going to deny that? <laughs> um, aside from that, that's all I have for you this morning. I hope you have a wonderful Sabbath, and I hope you enjoy our worship service.
Good morning, church, and happy Sabbath. For our call to worship this morning, I will be reading from responsive reading number 728 in the back of our hymnals. Responsive reading 728. Let the redeemed thank the Lord. I will read the normal print, and please join me in reading the bold. Let the redeemed thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wonderful works to the sons of men. And let them offer sacrifices of thanksgiving and tell of his deeds in songs of joy. Some went down to the sea in ships, doing business on the great waters. They saw the deeds of the Lord, his wondrous works in the deep. For he commanded and raised the stormy wind, which lifted up the waves of the sea. They mounted up to heaven. They went down to the depths. Their courage melted away in their evil plight. They reeled and staggered like drunken men and were at their wit's end. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He made the storm be still, and the waves of the sea were hushed. Then they were glad because they had quiet and he brought them to their desired haven. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wonderful works to the sons of men. Let them extol him in the congregation of the people and praise him in the assembly of the elders. He turns rivers into a desert, springs of water into thirsty ground, a fruitful land into a salty waste, because of the wickedness of its inhabitants. He turns a desert into pools of water, a parched land into springs of water, and there he lets the hungry dwell, and they establish a city to live in. They sow fields and plant vineyards and get a fruitful yield. Whoever is wise, let him give heed to these things. Let men consider the steadfast love of the Lord. For our gathering song, I invite everyone to please stand as we will sing, O Worship the King, hymn number 83.
pray. Good morning, Father. Yes, we thank you that you are our Redeemer, our friend, our Lord. Lord, we invite you this morning to be with us. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity as we can come together. Praise your name. Please, Lord, help us today to listen to your message. And thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 28. It talks about the transformative power of honest labor and generosity. In the words of the hymn we are about to sing, in our work and in our play, Jesus ever with us stay. May we always strive to be true and faithful unto thee. Then we truthfully can sing, we are children of the King. Hymn number 591. <laughs> This next hymn that we will sing speaks of being a practical Christian. Following Christ involves our whole heart and our whole life. A diligent and grateful heart prompts me to sing thy praise. Thy love and mercies from the start have blessed me all my days. We will be singing hymn number 639, A Diligent and Grateful Heart. Through deeds to serve. 
When storms come our way, it is comforting to know that he can bring that we can bring everything to Jesus and trust that he will take care of everything. Still, I can trust him. I know he will keep me, and he has redeemed me, and I am his child. Hymn number 529, Under His Wings. Hear me, Yahweh, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Guard my life, for I am faithful to you. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. Have mercy on me, Lord, for I call to you all day long. Bring joy to your servant, Lord, for I put my trust in you. You, Lord, are forgiving and good, abounding in love to all who call to you. When I am distressed, I call to you because you answer me. Among the gods, there is none like you, Lord. No deeds can compare to yours. All the nations you have made will come and worship before you, Lord. They will bring glory to your name, for you are great and do marvelous deeds. You alone are God. Teach me your way, Yahweh, that I may rely on your faithfulness. Give me an undivided heart, that I may fear your name. I will praise you, Lord, my God, with all my heart. I will glorify your name forever, for great is your love towards me. You have delivered me from the depths, from the realm of the dead. Arrogant foes are attacking me, O oh God. Ruthless people are trying to kill me. They have no regard for you, but you, Lord, are 
compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. Turn to me and have mercy on me. Show your strength in behalf of your servant. Save me because I served you, just as my mother did. Give me a sign of your goodness, and that my enemies may see it and be put to shame. For you, Yahweh, have helped me and comforted me. you to kneel for our congregational prayer. come before you this morning ready to receive your spirit, Lord. We know that without you, we can do nothing. So we pray for the special gifts of the Holy Spirit today. We will be listening to your word today, and our hearts will be listening to your spirit this morning. Allow us to see how truly wonderful you can be. Thank you for delivering us through the week so that we can come together on this beautiful Sabbath day. We ask that you bless each person in this room and those who are watching online from home. We also pray for those among us in need of a healing spirit and body, Lord. Shower us with your love and mercy and deliver us from the challenges of life. Bless our tithes and offering this morning. Please bless Pastor Isaac as he delivers your word. May our hearts receive your word through him. Help us to also carry what we learn here today when we leave the sanctuary so that we can reflect your character and bring glory to your name. We ask all these things in your son's precious name. Amen. As you know, we've transitioned to online giving and you can, sorry, you can give all of your tithes through our app called Adventist Giving, or you can choose to give a physical tithe using the envelopes in the back of your pews. I also encourage you to give other offerings as that's kind of what helps support our different ministries and different um, needs of our church. So if your heart feels like you want to give a little bit more, you're more than welcome to do so through the app again, or if you want to do through the envelopes, you can as well. At this time, I also want to invite Miss Inga and all the children forward for our children's story this morning. Happy Sabbath, church. Good morning, children. My name is Inga Goodwin, and today I'd like to tell you a story called From Crabs to Thieves. 
Do all of you know what a hermit crab is? Yeah. You do? How big is it? Big no, that's not. No, that's a little closer. They, they're little crabs. <laughs> um, but today, I'd like to introduce you to a giant cousin of the hermit crab called the coconut crab. These crabs grow to be about a meter wide, and they have claws like iron. <laughs> they have one of the strongest grips in the world. Coconut crabs live in land burrows and rock crevices on islands across the Indian and Pacific Oceans. And they prefer to come out at night or during the rain to look for food as they breathe better when the air is moist. Coconut crabs have a very good sense of smell that they experience through their antenna. And by flicking their antenna, they can spell potential food from far away. Things like rotting flesh, ugh, bananas, coconuts, fallen palm logs. And when they're really hungry and they can't find other things, they can smell live animals that they might eat. Half of their brain is devoted to smelling. That's right. And the coconut crab's amazing sense of smell has gotten him into lots of trouble. So much so that it has earned them the name robber crab. Ooh, -wee, that smells so interesting. Mm, where is it? And their antenna nose takes them into far places, even to places where we are. And then when they get there, their eyes start picking up on other things. <gasps> Ooh, I see something shiny. I'm going to grab this. And they're still looking around. Mm, I smell food in here, but ooh, there's that shiny thing over there. I'm going to grab this. You think the people can get it out of their grip? Yeah. No. And they steal their treasures away so they can take it back to their place and they can inspect it. <laughs> but what a disappointment. They went looking for what? Food. And didn't they come back with food? No, they didn't. Why? Because their eyes tricked them into thinking something shiny was truly worth taking. You know, children, humans can act like the robber crab. Do y'all remember the Bible story of Achan, the thief? Do you remember that story? Yeah. He was an Israelite from the tribe of Judah during the time when God helped defeat the Israelites, sorry, when God helped the Israelites defeat and destroy the city of what? Jericho, okay. Right before the great defeat, Joshua told the people that only the gold, silver, bronze, and iron of the city would return to God everything else would be destroyed. He warned the people that if they took anything, it was stealing and they would be cursed. Well, Achan the thief saw a pretty Babylonian robe. Oh, it's so beautiful. I just gotta have it. And he took that robe. And then he saw some shiny, shimmery silver and gold. I just gotta have it, he said. And he took it. And he stole these things away, brought them to his tent, and hid them. 
Well, when Joshua confronted Achan about his theft, Achan said something that I want you to remember. Are you paying attention? Okay. He said, I coveted them and took them. Most people think that the sin Achan committed was what? Stealing, right? That's what they think. Breaking the Eighth Commandment. But what happened in his heart before he took the items? What did he say? He coveted, he coveted them. Do you see that word over there? That is from the Tenth Commandment. But, you know, coveting is really what leads us to break all the other commandments. And it was the one that caused Satan to try and steal Jesus' position in heaven. You know, children, we can covet physical things like our brothers and sisters, new device or new toy. We can covet someone else's success like their good grades or their win at soccer. We can covet the way others dress and look on social media. Or we can cover other people's lifestyle like their car or their house or their vacations. But the problem with coveting is that it makes you unhappy with what you have. And it makes you angry and jealous of someone else. Most people think that their unhappiness inside is proof that they would be better off with the thing that they covet. But they are deceived. If they do get the thing they want, all too soon the shininess wears off and they discover, like the robber crab, that they are still unsatisfied. I want y'all to listen carefully. Are you listening? Okay. Our joy and satisfaction in life does not come from getting, but from giving. Jesus explains it like this in Acts 20 verse 35. This is from the Amplified Bible. It is more blessed and brings greater joy to give than to receive. We should always look to God for the things that we need. And when we look at others, we're not looking what we can get or what we don't have. We are looking for opportunities to serve and to share. Who here would like to experience God's way to satisfaction and joy? Would you? How about y'all? Yes? Let's pray. Holy Father, may we not get distracted in this world by shiny things. May we keep our eyes focused on Jesus. And if we do happen to look at others, may we look for ways to serve and share. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, good morning. Uh, I just want to make a quick announcement. I'm pretty excited about something happening this week. Uh, the Seventh-day Adventist Church has produced a, a movie uh, that will be premiering uh, this week in movie theaters around the world. Uh, it tells the story of the founding of our church, and and it's it's a it seems to be pretty great. Uh, you might have seen, yeah, the movie is called The Hopeful. Uh, it is it appears to be a remake of a Tell It to the World, which came out a few years ago, uh, kind of an updated version of that. Uh, but I think it's incredible that the story of our church gets to be on full display to people, um, at least around the country, uh, in a very public way. So it's going to be for two nights only, uh, unless it sells out, then maybe they'll be convinced to do more. Uh, but on, the, on this coming Wednesday night and Thursday night, 17th and 18th, um, I have invited, I work at Richmond Academy, and I've invited that community 
to come to the Short Pump uh, Regal Theater on the 18th, Thursday night at 710. But it's showing at, I think, three movie theaters around the, around the area. Uh, and I want to encourage you, make a show of it. Uh, it's going to be an incredible way to, to show the theaters that, hey, yes, we do care about our message. We do want to see this. We do want more people to see it. Uh, and so I would encourage you to uh, come out either Wednesday night or Thursday night to support the film and to enjoy the sharing of our, of our church's story uh, with, the, with the world. Uh, we're going to play the trailer right now for it. Thank you. Obey his word and believe. There is no time for delay. I believe the Bible is clear. Jesus will return in but four short years. I come before you today to tell you that I have been shown in vision. Father Miller's message was light. The Advent people were traveling on a path toward a bright and holy city. This is not the first time the end of the world has been prophesied by a fool, nor will it be the last if you do not renounce these radical ideas. You will not be welcome here in this house of worship. This was only the beginning of our journey. Her visions do not come from God. But my friends, she speaks with great tenderness of the word of the Lord. Holy Spirit encouraged our Advent hope. There were people who didn't listen and they fell off the path. Do you really believe this doctrine which you preach? I was lost and now I'm found. We must follow the word of God over the rule of men. We feel love, the love of Jesus. It lifts us up, it carries us forward. And it will guide us home. I was made for you. Good morning. Please turn with me to Ephesians 4.28. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give him who has need. I have fixed my mind on another time, on another time, and here I need to stand. Be 
is close at hand for which I watch and pray and that is today 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 until he comes I have set my course on the narrow And so, Lord, come quickly, this is my fervent prayer, for I've caught a glimpse of glory, and I'm longing to be to invite the elders to come forward uh, at this time. Um, I think most of you guys know, it's been told, um, it's a reminder that uh, our pastor, Pastor Isaac, is going to be heading to Egypt for a little over two weeks. You're leaving on Thursday, yes. is that correct? Uh, and and I, I find it very exciting that the ministry of this church and of our pastor gets to extend over uh, to Egypt. He's going to be conducting seminars and trainings for pastors over there uh, in Egypt to help boost their ministry, uh, to share the blessings uh, with them and as they minister in, in Egypt. So before he leaves, I wanted to, we wanted to uh, call the elders up here and to have a prayer, uh, prayer for him before he leaves this week. Um, let's pray. Heavenly Father, Thank you so much for the abounding blessings you have given us. Uh, Lord, may we continue to enjoy and share those blessings with so many. Lord, please uh, be with Pastor Isaac as he travels. It's a long trip, Lord. Give him the, the right rest and peace as he travels. And Lord, while he is there, give him the confidence to share your message, to share, share the Holy Spirit with these 
uh, pastors as they prepare to continue their, their ministries and to grow their ministries. Lord, may you bless his words. May you give him wisdom. May he be blessed and learn as he goes through this as well. We thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'll be leaving on uh, Thursday, uh, Thursday early morning. I'll be back, me too. So thank you for Patterson Avenue. For Our goal is to be missionaries, right? So I'm excited to go back to be a two weeks missionary in my country, which is, praise God, you know? And pray for me, we'll be conducting two weeks of seminar over there. Well, welcome church family, and we'd like to welcome our visitors. Thank you for choosing to worship with us this morning. And I'd like to welcome those who are online as well. It is a blessing morning, you know. It's a beautiful day as well. The thing we done with the book of Psalms last week, hopefully you had the chance to read Psalms. So we spent nine weeks reading the book of Psalms and with a blessing as well. And also, please, did everyone got one of these? If you didn't get it, make sure you get one of these. We are having a seminar also here at Patterson Avenue, May 10 and May 11, Friday evening, Sabbath morning, afternoon, and evening as well. Pastor Philip Saman, he is a great speaker, very well known as well in the Adventist community. He's retired, but he is a strong man who can bring the message. So I'd like to challenge you. Take several of these and invite a friend. Pray about it and say, okay, May 10 and 11, I will not come back to church until I invite a friend. And we want you to be here as well. So challenge yourself, pray, and invite a friend for May 10 and May 11. Make sure you get a copy of these as well. And remind yourselves. Well, we do a custom for almost a few months now at Patterson Avenue because we love our neighbors, we love our community, and we love to pray for everyone. So what we do every week, we a volunteer, uh, someone come in and he choose to take the Bible and the baptism gown. You pray for someone in your heart. Someone, you want that person to come to Christ, and gives their heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. The baptism gown is represent publicly they announce their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible means to be a good, faithful disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our friend Michael had it last week. This week, who wants to have it to pray for someone? You pray all week long for someone. It could be a friend, or a neighbor, or someone at work. Yes, sister, come in. Sister, uh, she's a visitor. She came the first Sabbath last week, and she was us today as well. So thank you. We'll just give you that, and you just pray for someone, and we are very glad you are here. Can I pray for you? Yes, our Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for our dear sister, as she voluntarily came in, Lord, that she is going to pray for someone in her heart that can come to the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Praise God. Okay, let's pray and we we'll start our worship. No? Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for the opportunity that we are here. We invite the Lord to open our hearts, our mi minds, to listen to your message. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Sister Inga, for doing part one of the sermon. It was very good, you know? In fact, I was thinking to say, oh, here she said the sermon. So praise God. We, have been, we continue the journey from the book of Ephesians. Remind you? Paul wrote to the church of Ephesus to encourage the church. Paul, he's the one planted the church of Ephesus. He traveled there, he preached the good news, 
people believed in the word and established a church. Now he's writing a letter to them. And we know Ephesus was very secular city. They had the most famous uh, goddess, goddess Diana or Artemis, you know, where people were worshiping. So it was a center of idol worship. But Paul planted a church over there. And he's writing to the church to encourage them. We preached from the first three chapters. And we discussed that the first three chapters are about building relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. I get spiritually fed. I pray. I ask God to lead me. Then we're switching to chapter 4. And Paul said, well, I'm glad you are. You have been sitting for a while. It's time to stand up and walk and do the work. So we, it's our time to do the work, to go and do mission work. And Paul discussed with us through the chapter, how can we do that? Then he's helping us here about some characters, how to be careful. Wondering why Paul wrote such a verse in the Bible to the Christians about stealing. You could say, wow, why, you know? Or why we are preaching about stealing today? We know we are Christians, faithful people, but sometimes we need to remind ourselves. And Paul is reminding the church, asking them to be careful. So I was reading about um, stealing and theft. It's something serious in the community. Uh, many people sometimes uh, doesn't have to steal a big thing, you know. You take something is not yours, even something very small, called stealing as well. So Paul is telling us, you are going to witness to the communities. You need to be faithful in everything you do in your life. So about the theft, there was a, a survey was done. It says about, it's a very... It's kind of old survey, but it says about 30% of the population will steal. 30%. Then, uh, not only uh, if they have the opportunity to, uh, I'll read it again. So, we have 30% of the population will steal. Not only if the opportunity arises, but also will create the opportunity whenever it's possible. So 30% looking for ways how to steal. 40% will steal if there is little dangers, they will be caught. And another 30% will not steal. So there is a big numbers, you know, for steal. In fact, the 30% that will not steal, they'll be afraid that they may be caught. Or they may be afraid, you know, that, mm, I'll be in trouble. So stealing is something happening. I was reading about the shoplifting. Another survey about shoplifting people do. It says between shoplifting and employee theft, uh, many stores you know, lose about 31 billion a year. A lot of money. There is shop shop lifting is just a serious issue as well. And that also cause all the stores raise the prices and average family could pay almost 400 a year because of shop lifting. So stealing is a serious issue here. So Paul just bringing to us about stealing. He is dealing with us about our characters. So let's remind ourselves from about some characters Paul speaks to us. In verse 22 in the book Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22, it said, that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupted according to the deceitful lusts. So we agreed and we preached about that, said, you bought off the old man. What does old man mean? Can you remind me? Because I don't want you to sleep. What's the old man? 
age, before we save, before we give our hearts to Christ, which is my old life. Because remember, Paul here is writing to the church of Ephesus who were not Christians, who were not believers, and they became Christians. He said, well, be careful. Your life before Christ was a different but when you accept Christ, your life should be different as well, right? If you are stealing, thou shalt not steal anymore. So then you're old man. So Paul is reminding you about your old habits. You need to ask God to help you for that. He continues, verse 23, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man. Except Christ, when you become a new man, you allow Christ to change you. Christ work in your heart. So that's why I said, well, I have a church. I want you to go out to preach to the community. But remember, you are not like them, you know, having the old bad habits. No, you present Christ. So God is telling you, Patterson Avenue Church, when you go, and witness to your neighbor, to your friends, to your family, you put off the old man, your old bad habit, and you represent Jesus Christ. And what Paul is telling us, and Paul then continues, we spoke about lying, right? In other verses, thou shalt not lie. And we agreed, we should not. We need to say the truth in love. Last week we shared about anger. And we said, oh, anger is a serious issue. We need to deal with it as well. And we shared how can we handle our anger, and Paul sharing that as well. Then today, Paul is reminding us about that in verse 28. Let him who stole steal no longer. Which is telling us your bad habits, you know? But rather, let him labor, working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give him who is need, has need. So Paul is reminding us about a very important issue. So today, we are going to share about, from that verse, four main points here, about what is the reason of stealing, what or stealing stems from four main points. Lack of genuine conversion, a temporal value system, not trusting God, and then to be lazy as well. So we're going to share Paul, or in that verses, we're going to discuss the problem and the cure of theft. You know, we have the problem. How can we get cure from it? So we have the first one about stealing yes about stealing stems from lack of genuine conversion you accept christ as your savior you accept him to work on your heart but unfortunately there are some people they like to keep their bad habits yes i like to have christ but i like to do my old life it does not work, right? So you need to be truly converted. So Paul is telling the church of Ephesus that, yes, you accepted Christ. You cannot practice the old habits. Give it away. Give it away. So Paul is telling us we need to have true conversion here. If someone can read for us Mark 7. 21 and 23, with loud voice. So we need to watch what is in our heart. You know, all these Evil stuff among them is thefts. That's something serious. So he said, you look as an old man. Old man, I mean the, your old life. Your old bad habits. 
How was your life before your Christ? Many of us, before we gave our heart to Christ, we were struggling with one of these, or many of them as well. But when I come to Christ, I say, Lord, I give my heart to you. So that's why many times it's still in heaven because lack of conviction. We are not truly converted in the word of God, and that is very important for us. Then what is the cure? So the problem is we are not converted. How can we solve that? Is truly trust in Christ as our Savior. Trust in Him. And that is very important. We need to trust in God. He will provide our needs. He is able to change my heart. True conversions mean that I say, well, God, I'm not sure you can help me. Yes, I become a believer, but there is too much I need to do. No, I, when I give my heart to Christ, what I need to say, Lord, you take it over. I trust in you. If you go with me in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 9 and 11, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 9 and 11, it says, do, do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor adulterers, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodoms, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, and he keep go on to the list that these character characteristics, they will not inherit the kingdom of God. But God is able to listen to us when we sin. We say, Lord, I'm sorry, forgive my sin. What is truly conversion is, I give it to God. So today, if you are dealing with one of these items, you know, as we read in the same almost verses in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 as well, if you are dealing with them, just be careful not to, not the one, that's the one I meant, you know. We need to be careful from these as well. Say, Lord, I'm sorry. Maybe I'm dealing with stealing. Help me to grow. Help me to trust in you and grow in you as well. And we cannot come to church. Or it doesn't mean that I'm a, uh, I'm coming to church that I totally converted. I need to give my heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. Because the Lord said, and I will declare to them, I never knew, depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. What does lawlessness mean? Which is you are not following the teaching of the Bible. If you are not following the teaching of the Bible, you need to go back and pray to God. Say, Lord, help me how to do it. You know, we worship a loving God, a caring God, who really willing and ready to hold our hands. That's why we need to be converted in the Lord Jesus Christ. So the first problem is not true conversion. The solution is to trust, trust in God as well. The other problem is timbrel's value. In, uh, sometimes we focus about er earthly things, temporary things. Like we heard the story about Achan, who went, God was clearly, you should not take any things from Jericho. It's clearly. He went there, he was impressed. Gold, you know, gowns, good stuff. And he just focused about that timberly stuff, and he took it. But unfortunately, he lost to be in the promised land. He lost the opportunity. That's why if you focus about timberly things, about earthly things, you could lose the kingdom of God as well. That's why value, timberly value systems. Again, in uh, Matthew 6, it says, Do not 
lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break and steal. For where your treasure is, their heart will be also. So the question is, where is your treasure? By the way, and we're going to discuss later, it's not wrong to be rich. It's very important to work hard, earn money, because God wants us to work, and, but he's focusing here about where is our focus? It's we build our trust in our financial situation, in our, the things we own, or our trust in God. Since where is your treasure? Because if your treasure is temporally, then you lose the kingdom of God. And John says, do not love the world, nor the things of the world as well. He said we should not love the world and the things of the, Lord, of the world. So temporary things, those who are dealing with temporary things, the, the, they view things, not God, as the key of happiness. As Achan, he thought that who stole money from Jericho, he thought by taking that stuff will make him happy and he will be rejoicing. Hopefully, you don't make material things to be the key happiness of your life. Like, for example, uh, Judas. He was staying with God for three years almost, you know. And he had seen the master, you know. But the Bible says he, he was a treasure of the group. He was responsible for money. But unfortunately, he was stealing money. He cared more about a few pennies here and there and forgot to be loyal to the master. He forgot that he cared more about money, not about God. That's why we need to put our Lord Jesus Christ first in our lives. People views things as a key to su uh, success and status as well. Rich is very important, you know. You need to work hard. But you need to value your success by your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Because Christ will help you to grow more as well. Those who have value, a uh, temporary value, says, we use things as a key to future security. Again, I'm just repeating. It's not wrong to be rich, to work hard. But don't depend. That, that's your security. I have that amount of uh, money here and there. Your security should be on the Lord Jesus Christ. Because if we focus on earthly things, that will force us to steal and make more money in not right way as well. So we should be, our heart should be there. So what is the cure of that? The cure of that is to have a biblical purities. To put the Bible first. What does the Bible say? The Bible says your heart should be with Jesus Christ. Then when my heart is with Jesus Christ, that's it, you know. God will bless me and lead me. As in the Bible, we have many heroes of the Bible. They were financially very well but they were putting God first, like Abraham, you know? Because he was very rich. He could not handle it with his nephew. They had to spread apart because of too much richness he had, you know? But he was putting God first. So it's not wrong to be rich, to have money, but the wrong is have timberly values. That's why we need to put the, uh, uh, put the Bible first and God first. The Bible says, for the love of money is the root of all source of evil. That's why we need to be careful. Doing that will lead us to steal as well, if we love money more than God. That's why we need Paul reminding the church with that issues as well. 
will take us to the third point, which is not trusting God. Why people steal and go take things is not theirs because they don't trust God. I have a, a good statement from uh, Martin Luther. There was a group of people they were stealing, you know? And someone said, I have God to do what I have God to do to survive. A reason, I need to steal, to live, you know, to eat. They were giving a reason. Then he was doing a debate with them, Martin Luther, and someone responded and said, what do you think you are doing? Martin Luther said. Then a man answered, we know it's wrong to steal, but after all, we have to live. The thing is that a good excuse. I want to, to pass here not only about stealing. Sometimes you tell your li yourself, I have to do that to survive. Uh, maybe it's better for me to lie, not to tell the truth. Or maybe I get angry because I cannot control it. We give ourselves excuse. Let me tell you what Martin Luther answered. And I like that answer. He said, I do not know that one must live, but one must be honest. I'll say it again, you know. I do not know that one must live, but one must be honest. Whatever you do, it all excuses. That's why we need to trust God to do that as well. So lacking trust in God, that is an issue. So, the cure of that is we need to trust God that he will give us a financial stability as well. Maybe we'll read, he said, give us our daily bread. So when we trust in God, that he will help us in our daily bread as well. And that is very important. As we read, you know, because sometimes we get worried and nervous, and there is no time to tell stories how people needed food, and they prayed, and God provided them right away. So God is able to provide our needs when we are faithful to him as well. Then stealing is uh, from, is this the right slide? I think it's not the right one. But anyway, so stealing is from assuming responsibility through hard work. You know, people who are lazy, that causes stealing. When we are la lazy, that's why I said you, you need to work hard, right? Work hard. Work is a blessing from God that he blessed us with. In fact, you know, to be lazy will make you Lazy people steal, make easy money. And that leads people to steal as well. But that's why we need to work hard. The cure, the problem is, is laziness. People get lazy, that's why they steal. The cure is we need to work hard as well. As Paul says in, in verse 28, said, but rather he must labor, performing what he, with his own hands what's good. So Paul say, you need to work hard. That's good. When God created Adam, it was in heaven, and said, do what? Work. Work hard. So we need to work to provide our needs as well. And so stealing is cause us a trouble as well. So what's good, which is the work is good. And then, now, last point is, from selfishness and greed. Why I steal? Because I'm a selfish or greedy. I can take stuff that's not mine. Why? Like a little child, you know, children take stuff that's not theirs and they're selfish. When we, the cause of stealing is I take things not mine. And I think I deserve it. I want it. I need it. And I steal it. And Paul say, no, 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 no. We should not do that as well. And stealing is help. Rather, we need to give 
as Sister Inga said, that we need to give. Giving, helping us to be generous with others. Helping us to grow in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why in verse 28, <coughs> I'll read it again. And it says, Let him who stole steal no longer. But rather, let him labor working with his hands what's good, that he may have something to give him who has in need. So, as we discussed here, the main problems of stealing. My prayer for us as children of God, that we allow God to work on us. Say, it does not have to be stealing, by the way, a bad habit in your life. Whatever habit. Say, Lord, help me. We are very grateful that we worship a loving God, a merciful God, a caring God who is willing to help us. If you are dealing with one issue in your life, either lying or stealing or getting unrighteous anger, whatever sin in your life, bring it to God. Say, Lord, I have an issue. Work with me, and God's able to help you. Let's pray. Lord, we, we thank you for reminding us with that serious issue, which is stealing, taking things not ours. Sometimes, Lord, we give ourselves excuse to do things not biblical. So, Lord, I just pray, if we do something wrong, we we'll just come and share it with you. Say, Lord, I'm sorry. Help us, Lord, to grow in you. So we can present you in a way to glorify your name. In Jesus Christ, amen. I invite everyone to please stand as we sing our closing hymn, Jesus Saves, hymn number 340. We have heard a joyful sound, Jesus saves, Jesus saves, spread the gladness all around. Jesus saves, Jesus saves, bear the news to every land, climb the steeps and cross the waves, onward tis our Lord's command, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Wafted on the rolling tide, Jesus saves, Jesus saves, tell to sinners far and wide, Jesus saves, Jesus saves, sing ye islands of the sea, echo back ye ocean caves, earth shall keep her jubilee, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Sing above the battle strife, Jesus saves, Jesus saves, by his death and endless life, Jesus saves, Jesus saves, sing it softly through the gloom, when the heart for mercy craves, sing in triumph o'er the tomb, Jesus saves, Jesus saves, lift the wind to mighty voice, Jesus saves, Jesus saves, let the nations now rejoice, Jesus saves, Salvation full and free, highest hills and deepest caves. This our song of victory. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Yes, Lord, we believe in you that you, that Jesus saves. Yes, Lord, please, if we are struggling with the sin in our lives. 
Give us the courage that we can bring it to you. Let's say, Lord, we hand it to you. And we know that you are a loving, caring Father who loves and who forgives and who forgets as well our sins, Lord. We thank you that you are a Father for us. I just pray for each individual person here, Lord. May you touch every person with a special touch as well. We invite you, Lord, to continue to bless us through the Sabbath day. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. invite everyone to attend our Sabbath school and for our potluck afterwards. God bless and happy Sabbath. Thank you.